at my next stage that I need to be at in order to kind of make this thing look kind of functional, decorative. All the holes drilled all the way around. Added toys here out of the way. This is what I've got so far. Is I got the holes drilled all the way around. I do a couple different sizes. What I'm going to do now is because you can see they're kind of fluffy on the outside there. They're not really pristine like they've been sanded at all. They're all just kind of randomly in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little handy dandy Dremel tool here. So I'm just going to turn this on here and I'm going to start grinding. I'm only going to grind the large holes and then I'm going to change to a different bit, grind the smaller holes. I don't know what's going to happen, let's find out. And I am going to grind out all of these little holes here. It looks all kind of, uh, let's say, smurfy. Because I don't know how it's going to come out because, well, I don't know what I'm doing. So this is the only thing I can think of uh, in order to make it look somewhat like it's a decent piece of art where somebody put some time and effort into it. There's kind of like what it looks like so far. Now I'm going to continue on doing the rest of this, the large bit, and then I'm going to change to the small bit and do it with the small bit. We're now at the second stage, about halfway through I've been uh, using this little round tip here in order to get the smaller holes that are inside here. Kind of show you what I've got so far. So I've kind of got this all the way around here. I got all the big holes. Uh, now I'm kind of uh, I'm reaming out the medium holes uh, with the little cone bit, and then I have this little itty bitty one if I ever want to do anything really froggy. I've got some spots in here where I'm thinking I might be able to use this. I don't know. I might not be able to. It uh, it all kind of depends. It's looking like it's pretty chewed up already, all the way around. And I've got some parts here that have busted out the sides. I'm, I'm wondering if maybe I might want to continue that to make it look so it doesn't look, they don't look so like oddly chewed up. Make it a little bit more regular. I am just continuing to ream out these holes here. And it looks like I'm over, over in here. I'll be continuing this little doohickey right here. I'll kind of give you a short time lapse of uh, what it looks like and you see what I'm doing here on some of these spots where I can't really get it because they're because it's kind of flat here on some of those spots I'm gonna go ahead and burn those all the way down with with this and be able to get a few more spots out of it maybe it'll shine up a little bit we'll find out so now it seems I have gotten all the uh, medium holes kind of cleaned out change this bit for this little bitty bit, then we're going to see what happens with that. Um, it's best to put a nice light pressure on there and slowly start your your divot in. And then once you feel a nice decent foothold, you can go ahead and press in. Alright, so I've got most of the grinding done. All the way around the outside. So now it looks like uh, something a little bit more palatable although I do have a couple areas in which I slipped with the Dremel and I didn't have my guardrail didn't have my guardrail in place you see here there's one there and then there's another one there oh, and there's the other one there ran across the ran across the wood right there so what I'm going to do uh, to alleviate that, I am going to, first off I'm going to sand this. No matter how hard I try, there's still going to be some of the natural wood top in here. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to hand sand uh, all the way around here. Then I'm going to measure out a border to put a, a border in here, go all the way around. Just a small border that I glue in to cover up those Mars because they're pretty deep and I don't think I'm going to be able to get them out without sandpaper and then I have a big old divot right there and it just looks like it's somebody sanded something out of it. This one over here is pretty deep right there. I think the best way to go along in there with a, with a small border. I've also got some 
parts in here where you can see where I slip with the uh, with the raspy thing. I've got another one there that I slip raspy thing. You can see it wrapped right on around through there. That's where I'm at right now. I'm at sanding after I have textured the top. Okay, I have my lid put together and I have the top finished, the side finished. I got it all sanded. What I'm doing now is I'm installing the hinge. I have already made a mistake. I installed the hinge on this side because the lid was turned around the opposite direction. I installed it wrong. Little holes here that go all the way across. So what I've done is I've turned it around and the lid fits just perfect because it wasn't really quite square and all that stuff because well I didn't know what I was doing. What I'm doing now is I've got one screw in here and I've closed it to make sure that it fit okay and everything looks smurfy. Got a piece of wood in here to wedge that distance in there a little bit so I don't get as uneven as I did on the other side. I'm going to screw the hinge in. Now the hinge is screwed in and it closes. You can see what I've done with the top here. Those little bubbles all the way around. And I've sanded them down. You can see there's some in there that got burn marks in them. I'm going to leave them like that just because, well, I don't want to sand them out. I think it makes, gives it a little bit more of a unique flavor. There you have it. Box. Now I'm just going to have to go over it some more with some sandpaper and oil it. Yeehaw. Made a mistake. I had accidentally put the lid on backwards and I did I did have uh, six holes across here. The hinge would have been. Uh, what I did is un undid it and I flipped the lid around because it was a little off right here. It's a little bit off right here. I mean just a smidgen. And then over here in the back it's off just a smidgen and down through here. But it's pretty close. They're not doing as much finagling with the squareness. I did pretty good. It opens up nicely. Uh, in order to cover up the, the holes that were here. Put some contact cement on some leather that I had laying around. That also accommodated the thickness of the hinge. Closes nicely and snugly. Doesn't have any gaps or anything in there. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to prep this to be polyurethane. Blown it all free. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this mineral spirits here. Okay, here we go. I'm going to be putting the stuff on it. Never used it before. I don't know how it's going to come out. Let's find out. In order to get all around in the circle, swirl like this, you'll be able to get all the stuff from inside the bottom of the circle. You don't end up with little flat bottoms in there. Now what I'm doing is I'm just going over the top of it. Seem to get out, go across it like this. Now that I've got it all kind of wet and everything, I am going to go ahead and go over with the second coat. See if it'll kind of glass up a little bit. And I'm going to put it on a rag. And I'm going to wipe this down to get all the dust off of it. So the polyurethane will have a nice chance to settle into the wood and uh, stay smurfy. Bye. 